Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b plus 2 to the power c equals 42. a, b, and c are integers, positive and negative, and 0. And we're going to be looking for a, b, c values. So we're going to be looking at this problem from several different angles. First of all, if a or b or c is negative, think about it, then we do get a fraction less than 1, right? For example, if we had, instead of this equation, let's just, you know, hypothesize that we had 2 to the a plus 2 to the b plus, and if you don't want to get confused, I can use x, y, z. So suppose we had 2 to the x plus 2 to the y plus 2 to the z equals 33 as our equation. In this case, that's kind of like an interesting scenario. You can kind of think about it this way. This can be a 1, this can be a 1, and then we'll get a 2, and then we'll have a 31 left over. But 31 is not a power of 2. So instead, we can do the following. This can be 1 half, this can be 1 half. Those two together will make 1, and we're going to have 32 left over, so z can be 5. By the way, these are x, y, z values, not the 2 to the x value, okay? Make sense? So this will work. And what this means is if 2 to the x is 1 half, from here we basically get x equals y equals negative 1 and z equals 5. I guess that's what I meant, and this shouldn't be a 5, by the way. I kind of confused myself. This should be a 32. Okay, so these are the 2 to the x, 2 to the y, 2 to the z values, and then from there I'm finding x, y, z. Make sense? So this combination would work, and of course, x, y, z can switch around, notice the symmetry, right? Or, there's another scenario that works, think about it, did you find it? Okay, I'm about to write it, pause the video if you don't want to see the answer, but it could also be 16 plus 16 plus 1, because 16 and 1 are both powers of 2. In other words, this gives us x equals y equals 4 and z equals 0. Obviously, x, y, z, again, can switch around, so that's going to give us more permutations, but we're going to look at it as a set, because we have symmetry, right? Notice that there are different scenarios, right? But in our case, this does not work, because the reason being, if you think about it, in both of these cases, we have a 1 and we have a 1. So when we subtract 1 from this number, like 42, you get 41. 41 is not a power of 2. And if both of these became 1, then 40 is not a power of 2 either. Make sense? So it's not going to work, so we have to do it differently. Okay, anyways, I just want to show you that we might have negative solutions sometimes. Okay? Anyway, so let's take a look. First of all, we are adding 2, 3 actually. We're adding powers of 2, but there's 3 of them. And the sum is 42. Notice that 42 is between 32 and 64. In other words, the sum of the powers is going to be greater than 5. This is 2 to the 5th power and this is 2 to the 6th power. Make sense? So in other words, A needs to be less than or equal to 5. And I can safely say that A can be 5, right? Or can it? Let's check. If A is equal to 5, what happens? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm kind of looking at particular values, and obviously we can say what happens if A is equal to 4, what happens if A is equal to 3, so on and so forth. After these, I'm going to show you a more holistic approach, all right? So bear with me while I kind of look at it case by case. If A is 5, then we're going to have, and remember our equation is 2 to the A plus 2 to the B plus 2 to the C. And this might look like overkill because 42 is such a small number, you can easily write the cases. But think about it. Well, what would happen or what would you do if the sum was really like large, like a four digit, five digit number, right? You would definitely look at a simpler case, which is this problem, because it's important. That's a problem solving strategy. Kind of look at an easier case. That'll give you some ideas. Anyways, if A is equal to five, then this is going to be 32. So from here, two to the B plus two to the C is just going to be 10. And again, you can just guess and check, right? I mean, this, is, this could be an 8 and this could be a 2, right? Exactly. So, and they can, inter uh, they can switch around. So this means B is 3 and C is 1, if A is equal to 5. So that kind of gives us a solution. And obviously, they can switch around. 
Now, what would happen if a is equal to 4? Let's go and take a look. If a is equal to 4, then 2 to the b plus 2 to the c, you have to subtract 16 from 42, and if you do, you're going to get 26. Hmm. Here's an interesting question. Can we get 26 by adding 2 powers of 2? Or can we get 26 by adding 3 powers of 2? How many powers of 2 do you need? Those are good questions, and they are all connected to one thing. That one thing that all computers, all internet, everything works on. You know what that is? Binary. Zeros and ones. That's it. Anyways, think about powers of 2. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, so on and so forth. You want to get 26. You couldn't use 32, anything 16 or less. But if you use a 16, you have to use 10. You see, there's no way to get 26 by using or by adding 2 powers of 2. That's impossible, which means a equals 4 is not going to work. And then you can go with, if a is equal to 3, then you're going to get 2 to the b plus 2 to the c is equal to 42 minus 8, which is 34. And obviously, 34 can be obtained from 2 and 32. Make sense? If a is equal to 2, then you're going to get 2 to the b plus 2 to the c is equal to 42 minus 4, which is 38. Can you get 38? Nope, because you would need a 32 and 6, but 6 is not a power of 2. And so 2 fails, and if a is equal to 1, you can kind of look at it as 2 to the b plus 2 to the c equals 42 minus 2, which is 40. And yes, you can obtain 40 by using 8 and 32. So by using those two combinations, because 2 powers of 2, they're kind of easy to add and guess. Make sense? Okay, cool. So this should give us a good idea. First of all, notice that when we solve this problem, obviously this didn't work, right, either. And when we solve the problem, we kind of found... 5 comma 3 comma 1 as a solution, right? And obviously, A, B, C are interchangeable. Therefore, the other values can only be 3 and 1. So they kind of give us an idea. You can think about this would be the highest value, right? It's important to understand these bounds. Anyways, let's get back to what I just said a little while ago. Can we look at it holistically? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So suppose A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to C. And I'm saying this because they can be equal, but they can't all be equal. Make sense? Okay, cool. So since I, and by the way, without loss of generality, you like that W log, right? Log. Okay, that means that without loss of generality. And we can assume this because what if ABC switch around and then you can change the inequality? Makes sense, right? Okay, great. So this is equal to 42, but here's what I'd like to do. Since A is kind of like the smallest power, I'm going to factor it out because I can, right? Everything inside will be integers and we're going to get 1 plus 2 to the b minus a. Think about what would you multiply 2 to the a by to get 2 to the b. The answer would be 2 to the power b minus a and then 2 to the power c minus a equals 42. Now, this is super important because this type of concept comes up uh, in Olympiad problems, obviously higher, higher powers, right? Much higher. But the same idea, we factored 42 or the left-hand side, which means we can also factor 42. 42 is 2 times 3 times 7, right? So the only power of 2 that goes into 42, the highest, lowest, whatever, well, that's not the lowest, it's the highest, is 2. And the lowest is going to be 1, but if this is 1, then this needs to be 42, So and this needs to be 40, but that's not going to work. We already talked about, wait a minute, is that going to work? Well, it's going to have to be 41, but 41 doesn't work. 40 works because... 32 plus 8. Make sense? Anyways, this is not going to work, so we have to go with 2. This means that the rest is 1 plus 2 to the b minus a plus 2 to the c minus a equals uh, 42 divided by 2 or 3 times 7, which is 21. If you subtract 2 from both sides, I mean 1 from both sides, that's what I meant, you will get 20. And then at this point, if you want to I mean, it's not, you don't have to, but you can divide both sides by, I mean, multiply both sides by 2 to the A. That's going to give you 20 times 2 to the A. I'm not sure if that's going to help you, but the thing is, I guess it's probably easier this way. So here's what I'm thinking. I need to add two powers of 2 again, and I need to get 20. If you can't figure this out, call this D and call this E, and then solve this problem the same way we did, like holistically, we looked at it, and in this case, obviously, b is less than or equal to c, so this d is going to be less than or equal to e. You can kind of factor out d and do the same thing. Make sense? And see which numbers are going to go into that. 
Okay, make sense? So basically, this ba this gave us, and by after by the way, after multiplying the numbers, we got two to the b plus two to the c equals forty because we got a equals one, and then from here again, you can take out b two to the b. I mean, and do the same exact same idea. In this case. I can test different values for A, B, C, like B can be 1, 2, 3, can't be 4 because 16 doesn't go into 40. But if B is equal to 1, uh, this is going to be 20, it's not going to work. If B is equal to 2, it's going to be a 4, that's going to be a 10, it's not going to work. If B is equal to 3, this is going to be an 8, this is going to be a 5, this is going to be a 4, and yes, it'll work. So, in other words, if you want to find or express the solutions as a set, I can write 1, 3, 5 so they can do all the permutations they want. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.